There's a star out there that actually fires lasers. Let me introduce you to Eta Carinae, one of the most unstable binary pairs in the universe. There's two stars in the Eta Carinae system, and they're surrounded by the relatively new Homunculus Nebula. But buried deep within the spectacular nebula, near the pair of stars, are three blobs of gas called the White Gelb Blobs, just a bit further out from the center than the stars are. And it turns out that it's these extremely dense gas clouds that enable the lasing action. Now, of the two stars, the smaller one, Eta Carinae b, is significantly hotter. In fact, it's so hot that it gives off light deep in the UV part of the spectrum, bathing the blobs in it. Consequently, electrons are knocked away from otherwise neutral hydrogen atoms. Eventually, of course, those hydrogen ions find electrons again. And when they do, the electrons fall back into the hydrogen ions with such force that they give off light. Of characteristic energy levels, in fact. These energy levels are called the Lyman series, and the Lyman photons bathe the blobs. In particular, the two lowest energy levels in the Lyman series, Lyman alpha and Lyman beta, are most present. Those kickstart the process of lasing. See, there's oxygen and iron in these gas clouds, and by sheer coincidence, singly ionized iron and neutral oxygen both can be excited by Lyman alpha and Lyman beta photons respectively. And I should be super clear, this is wildly rare. The energies of the Lyman photons are nearly identical to the two transition energies in oxygen and ionized iron. Now, what happens next is again a bit unusual. Most of the time, the oxygen and iron atoms will just spontaneously decay back to a lower energy level by emitting the same kind of photon that it absorbed. But that doesn't happen every time. Sometimes, the iron or oxygen atoms emit a slightly less energetic photon, leaving the atom in a metastable state. That means that it's not actually stable, but it'll stay in that unstable state for a long time compared to the length of typical atomic transitions. Now, because there are so many Lyman photons present, the rate at which oxygen and iron atoms enter these metastable states is faster than the rate at which they decay out of them. So you end up with more atoms in the high energy state than in the lower energy state that they decay into, a population inversion. And that's a critical requirement for lasing. So now you have a bunch of atoms in a high energy state and fewer in the state they'd like to decay into. And when one decays, it can trigger a cascade of further decays by emitting a photon, causing a chain reaction. In fact, this is what the SE stands for in the acronym LASER, stimulated emission. In the case of the oxygen laser, the light emitted is in the near infrared, and for the iron laser, it's a bit deeper in the infrared. Once the iron and oxygen atoms drop down to their lower energy state, they promptly emit slightly more light, ending up back where they started, ready for the process to start over again. And so a stellar laser is born.